Well, the Egyptian army says it will run that country until a new government is de democratically elected, and they want that done in the next six months. So is Egypt and the Mideast region more secure now than it was last week when Hosni Mubarak was still in power? Hans Nichols joining us from Washington with Stephen Hadley, who was President George W. Bush's national security advisor. Hans, over to you. Stephen, thanks for joining us today. You served as the president's last president's last national security advisor. You've been in the room, inside the Situation Room. Describe the velocity of events that you've witnessed, that we've all witnessed over these past three weeks. And did you ever think the Mubarak regime would collapse this quickly? I think we all thought at some point the Mubarak regime would have to uh, square accounts with history. It is an authoritarian regime. Uh, these are difficult to handle. You know, when you get in these crises, you have options before a situation goes into crisis, and you have options after. But during the crisis, in many ways, your options are very constrained. You've got a lot of dilemmas. You don't want to uh, throw a long-standing ally under the bus and therefore make other allies nervous. On the other hand, you don't want to go down with the ship, go down with a long-standing ally after his people have given up on him. So there are all kinds of dilemmas. It's uh, very difficult for any administration. I think the administration, it, they were a little uh, slow out of the block, but I think in the end they did a pretty good job and the United States is in a pretty good position. You talked about some of the nervousness in the region. Of course, there are clashes uh, among allies, but also among those that aren't necessarily allies. There are clashes in Yemen, Iran, Algeria, Bahrain. Which of these countries do you think is most likely next to perhaps succumb to this democratic wave? Well, we do not know. A lot of people are, are uh, concerned about Jordan. They're concerned about Yemen. Uh, these are states that have been longtime allies of the United States, along with Saudi Arabia. I think we're not paying enough attention to Iran, Syria, and some company, countries not in the region, like Venezuela, North Korea, and Cuba. These are regimes that really could use the kind of people power we saw in Cairo. And the very interesting thing will be what these uh, people in these countries are what conclusions they draw from the Egyptian uh, experience. But the one I'd be focusing the most on is Iran. They made a run at, at getting more freedom in, in 2009. It was brutally put down. I think the Iran Iranians are thinking, you know, if the Egyptian people can have more say in their future, why not we, the great Iranian people? So the one I'd be watching is Iran. Stephen, what can the White House do to kind of uh, help that along a little bit? Because a lot of the people uh, that Carol and I interview on this show, notably some of the more har harder line guys, uh, Fuad Ajami among them, have said that uh, the U.S. dropped the ball with the summer 2009 protests in Iran and also that we were doing that in Egypt. What can the U.S. do if, if we see protests in Iran again? Well, one of the things that they can do, and the administration, I think, is better positioned to do that now than they were two years ago, is make it clear that we are on the side of freedom. We are on the side of the right of people to control their own future. Uh, that's very important. Secondly, if there are demonstrations that emerge in Iran, one of the things the administration did well in Egypt and did not do well in Iran two years ago is make clear that, in our view, the use of force against a regime's own people who are simply peacefully demonstrating is not acceptable under any conditions and ought to be the source of international condemnation. If we can do that, it may make the security forces a little bit hesitant to crack down and therefore give a little bit of space for these demonstrators to be able to organize and make their grievances known. Well, Mr. Hadley, I think we're running out of time here. Just one, one final question, if I could get you on. How much credit does President Bush deserve for the fall of the Mubarak regime? Well, I think he did two things. One, he made it very clear that the purchasing stability at the cost of, of uh, supporting authoritarian regimes was a bad bargain. The hopelessness it produced made the Middle East a recruiting ground for terror. In the end of the day, these regimes are not stable. That was a radical proposition when he made it four or five years ago. It's now accepted uh, logic. And second of all, he made it very clear that the United States was on the side of freedom. The administration was a little slow to get there. I think they're there now. But I think they ought to give a little credit to President Bush, because I think he really showed them the way. Well, thanks very much for joining us. A little vindication, perhaps. Uh, Matt, Carol, back to you guys.